Okay, so this is going to be an overview slash high-level guide on how I develop packages compatible with the Unity Package Manager, specifically focusing on the deployment pipeline aspects with a few tips and tricks along the way. I won't be sharing code for each individual step in the deployment pipeline as that would take a 20-minute video and turn it into over two hours, but I will cover the different pieces that make up my pipeline, and I'll also point out where I wrote my own automations and what that automation is doing, as well as any third-party tools that I used. So if you choose to follow my footsteps, you should be able to. If you're curious about the overall cost, I have a $10 monthly limit set on GitHub. Just a clarification, that $10 is a limit. So that's the cap that GitHub will allow me to spend. I'm not anywhere near that on my month to month. My bills every month is like five or 10 cents. It's super cheap. And that's simply due to the fact that I have so many packages. I have 25 to 30 packages that I'm supporting. And within that, there's at least 10 different versions per package. Um, some of the packages have up closer to 50 to 100 different versions because of how much I'm working on them. So yeah, cost with GitHub is really not the concern. However, that was only needed once I broke out of their free tier, which happened at about 10 packages or so. Um, GitHub is very generous with their free tier, so you should be able to build out your entire deployment pipeline and store some of your very first packages all for free without paying. Um, optionally, you don't have to do this step. I run a Verdaccio private registry in parallel to storing my packages on GitHub. Um, it's not necessary. The cost of that would just be however much money you put into the hardware uh, to, to build that server. Um, Veraccio gives a couple extra features like search functionality in the package manager when you're trying to find your own packages. But again, it's not necessary if you just want to get your feet wet and get started. So um, I guess to start, um, I one thing you need to remember is if you're working with scoped registries, which is how Unity operates with package manager, um, in your project settings, you'll need to specify whatever your scoped registry is. Um, now, I have mine pointing to uh, my Verdaccio server that I run on a local server right next to me. Um, but uh, previously, I used GitHub packages. Currently, I still store my packages on both GitHub and my Verdaccio server. However, GitHub does not support NPM search endpoints. So in your package manager, you won't be able to see this view where you see all your different packages that you are currently working on and developing. Um, you won't be able to see everything. You can still import them by clicking the plus and then adding from a Git URL if you have them on GitHub packages, but you just won't be able to search for them using the search bar or uh, have this view of them unless you've already installed them using that Git URL. So that's something to remember. But um, yeah, so that's the first step. I'm going to blur out this URL, but it points at my private package registry. Um, and then the scope is uh, reverse URL format, just like normal NPM packages. Um, Two quick notes is that uh, your packages folder here in the editor is actually a blend of two different folders within your file explorer. Um, it blends from, so if I open up here, uh, at the this is the root of this project here. It blends your packages folder, which is all local packages, as well as your manifest.json lists exactly what packages and what versions should be in this project. Uh, but everything that's not a local package, in this case, the one I'm editing is the template package, will be stored in your library package cache. Um, so this is all of the like the Unity projects as an example. And even if I had a custom package that I was importing or I had a dependency to in my template package, that would be stored in here, library package cache, because the package manager is the one who installed it. Um, the only locally installed packages will be in this packages folder. Um, in most cases, that's the specific package you are editing. My personal workflow is I create one separate Unity project for every package that I'm working on and editing. It helps me prevent from accidentally including dependencies to other packages without realizing it. Um, assembly definition files help uh, kind of enforce that a little bit more, but it's still possible if you don't separate them into independent projects that you can accidentally install um, a separate package using package manager and not realize that you're utilizing it in whichever one you're trying to edit. But um, to quick show an example of some development work here, or I mean, um, the kind of process of actually making a deployment, um, notice I am inside the root folder and then I'm in the packages and then the one I'm editing is the template package. Uh, my template package repo is just a repository that I use. Um, I can show that here. Uh, that has the default kind of structure that Unity outlines for how your packages packages should be laid out. They have this in their own documentation. Um, 
And uh, the two other things on top of what Unity recommends that I have is this .github folder is for automations. I use GitHub Actions to leverage semantic release, which combines a commit message format with semantic versioning and automatically detects if it should publish a new release and does so accordingly. Um, so that folder has that workflow and then .git ignore and .npm ignore. npm ignore is just tells it to ignore that semantic release configuration file, ignore my git ignore file, and ignore all of those workflow files when it's publishing to uh, any npm registry. Um, so we can go ahead and kick this off. One other thing you'll notice is if I run git status, you'll see that a bunch of meta files, metadata files have not been committed, staged, anything. That's because in the template package, you don't want to include meta files. You do have to include them for any actual package that you're leveraging. Um, so for example, like my, my, um, here is a, my movement, um, package that I'm working on for ECS. Um, I do need to make sure I'm staging and including the meta files because the meta files include the GUIDs, the GUIDs that link all your different scripts and all your different um, assets together so they know where they're located at. But if I allowed my template package to include those meta files, every time I spin off of this template repo to make a new package, um, I would end up getting conflicting GUID files for all my folders like the documentation folder, the editor folder, runtime, samples, etc. Um, and that's annoying to deal with because when you get conflicting GUIDs, um, you, the only way to fix it is to create a project, import both of those packages, manually fix the GUID problem, and then commit both of those packages back to their own respective registries, and it's just a hassle. So don't commit your metadata files in your template package. But I'm going to go ahead and make a change to my readme file. Oh, this is going to quit. Oh. Um, but I'm going to make a change to my readme file and show kind of how the automation works and kick that off. And I can also show the, um, I have it automatically create documentation as well. Um, so in as semantic release will automatically populate my change log. You can see that here. It's just a normal markdown. Um, but uh, separate from that is in the actual NPM release in that package publication, it will create a uh, API documentation using docfx. It's the same tool that Unity uses. Unfortunately, Unity does not publicize their template, so I've just done my best to find a template that um, works and has a decent structure. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go into the README. Um, let's just make a. I'm going to make this super basic. Uh, oh, here's a typo. I can add an I. If this is a template repo. Okay. Um, normally, I'm just making a change to documentation, so I wouldn't actually um, make this be considered a fix. Uh, or anything, I would just call it a chore because I'm updating documentation. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and call it a fix. So if we go get status, you can see that I updated that readme, git add readme, git commit. I'm going to um, call this a fix. I could also call this a feat. I could also call this major. There's a number of different prefixes I could use that's defined in my semantic release configuration file. I have that stored in a separate repository, so it allows me to kind of version my deployment tools separately and independently from uh, my actual Unity packages. But I'm just going to call this a fix to trigger a patch version bump and say um, fixed a typo in readme uh, description. The other thing is, check this, you can see that it uh, this is a one commit ahead. However, I recently did a version bump, so I need to pull because part... Um, and do that. No. Uh, part of the automation is it will automatically tag your repository and issue a GitHub release. So you notice I've got two new tags for development and this, um, both for 1.3.9. Difference for development and the non-development tags is development one includes the samples folder, the documentations folder, all as is, whereas the actual release to the registry adds tilde suffixes to certain folders that we don't want you to compile. Um, Unity recommends this. Say They say, hey, add a tilde for any folder that you don't want to compile. Specifically, they denote the documentation folder and the samples folder. They should not be compiled by Unity. Um, the samples, the reason being is, uh, here's another project I can show. Um, when you install a package, this will show up as a caret, and you define these different samples in your package.json, and you tell Unity where to look. Um, the reason for this is, uh, let's say you have a number of different samples and... Um, they've all got code and maybe they're conflicting code from one sample to the next. 
um, they're named the same kind of a class or whatever the case. You don't want that code to be compiling and causing errors in your system. So tilde tells you they don't compile this and then when you import it, it copies from that samples folder into your assets folder. And so um, that's why uh, you need to add that tilde so Unity does not compile it. But um, that's where there's two tags. I needed to pull so it got those latest tags. Now I can push to master so get at uh, push origin master. And that's going to just push it up to GitHub. We can follow along. Um, last one was 42 minutes ago. Two minutes ago, okay, it was just a couple seconds. But um, we just made that commit. And now you can see this little orange dot is because it kicked off a GitHub action. Uh, and we go into here, release. Um, I got a couple different stages in this action, but basically what it's doing is it's reaching out to another repo. So I'm gonna call this build the Unity package. Um, this is another one of my repos. Uh, this is a composite action. If you want to learn how to create your own, look up GitHub composite actions. Um, essentially, it's a GitHub action that can be stored in its own repository and versioned on its own. Um, and its logic is stored in the action.yaml. Uh, this one reaches out to another um, composite action. And this is why composite actions are nice is because you can kind of build like Legos. Um, one composite action is com uh, comprised of two others and so on. Um, so I have another one that I call document unity package. And this is the one that actually handles my docfx generation. So I can show you what that looks like. So while this one is running through my automations here, let's go into my alignment package. This is what I use for the hover pose assist. Basically, it's a lightweight neural network that allows me to kind of alter weighting for how aligned two objects are and then take actions based on that. But if I go into my packages and then download um, one of the files that got published. There we go. Go ahead and open that. Open. Uh, and then in here, I can go into the documentation folder and you see I have this API documentation. So this, I'm going to go like that and then go here. And let's just drag this out here so I can show it. I do not want to drag that around. I'll fix that later. But open this up and then I can go into my index.html and this is full documentation for, um, let's pull this back up, full documentation for the package. Um, this is one typo I need to fix here. It's got a template in there, but this is for my transform alignment um, system. So I ignore the scripting API. It I do XML comments on everything. Um, and so that's what docfx uses. It uses, parses through your code and uses XML comments to generate all of this documentation. So because I'm in the habit of including that XML comments on literally every single file that I write, just because when you work across so many different packages, it's kind of necessary because you'll you won't touch a package for a while and then you need to come back to it and remember what you're working on. So, um, yep. And everything's organized. This is just kind of normal doc effects, but uh, I created this template. So it's kind of organized with my logo, um, change log and license. I haven't built out a license yet, but, um, change logs populated here. All these links link back to GitHub. Um, you can see here, this is because, um, I need to clean this up, but, uh, this can happen if I deleted a release to re-release it because some weird bug was happening in the deployment pipeline. So I really just need to clean that up. That one's on me. But um, yes, yeah, so that's the documentation. Now we can jump back into the action, see how this is going. Just to describe what's going on here, the build unity package composite action is a orchestration layer essentially that connects my semantic release action to my document unity package action and then follows that up with actually issuing the npm publish commands um, and it's also the one that kind of does my folder renaming of adding those tildes to the end of, of the documentation folder and the samples folder um, my document unity package action simply uses choco to install docfx and then run that on the code of my package and the um, semantic release action is a wrapper of cyc jimmy uh, there semantic release action, which is essentially they converted an NPM tool, that's the official semantic release tool, into a fully featured GitHub action. One other gotcha to keep in mind is that if you're orchestrating different actions and layers like this, so that they can be decoupled, is that unless you have a GitHub enterprise license, uh, you will need to first check out the other repository. So in my case, the build unity package needs to check out my uh, semantic release repository and then also my document unity packages repository and you'll need a github personal access token for that uh, if you have an enterprise license you can kind of skip that step you don't have to worry about tokens or anything and setting that up because you can just use internal repositories 
but you can only get internal repositories if you're an enterprise. So if you're an indie developer, keep that in mind. It'll eventually create a release. You can see it's already started. It's making my tags um, with 1.3.10, but it'll make a release and then it'll make an official GitHub package. Um, and it'll publish that new version here. Then it will uh, also publish to my local Verdaccio server, which is here. I'm gonna blur out this URL, but this is running on the server next to me. Um, and these are all the different packages that I support. This is the server that I allows me to use Unity's kind of search functionality. Um, it's gonna recompile the code because I just made that GitHub push. But this is essentially the view um, that uh, you get. Um, the nice piece about having that search functionality and using a Verdaccio server rather than just GitHub is like it'll give you these little icons and there's a new version available, right? Little things like that. Um, I can use that my carrot and see all the different versions that are available. So 1.2.5 all the way down through 1.0.0. Um, so little things like that are very nice in having it in this view. If you only use GitHub, um, you will see anything that is installed in your project. So you'll see the custom and you'll see it, see like these three are currently installed. Once it's installed, you'll be able to see the different versions in there. But you won't be able to see anything that's not installed. So that's why having a private Verdaccio server is nice or any other NPM server. Um, uh, Unity Package Manager, there is an open UPM registry that's public online. However, uh, it does not support private scoped registries. So as an example, I don't want all of my code to be publicly available to anybody and everybody. So that's why I don't use open UPM for my packages and I use the Verdaccio server. If you don't mind your code being publicly available and let's say it's not a paid piece of software or any no licensing concerns or anything, you can definitely use open UPM and you get uh, those search endpoints. So you can say my registries and see things like that um, in here. So uh, I use that for a couple different packages for some different UI effects. Um, I leverage open UPM. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover um, here. Let's go and refresh this. I think it should be, yeah, 1.3.10, two minutes ago, packages, 1.3.10 has been published. Um, so this is the tar zip, um, and I can go into my package registry, refresh, and search for com.otrstudios.template package. Uh, and you can see this is also 1.3.10. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, one other consideration, Unity covers this in their documentation, but you'll need to add like an NPM uh, token, basically your credentials that allows you to allows Unity to log into whatever your scoped registries are. Um, and whether you're using GitHub or your own private Verdaccio server, you will still need uh, that file. Um, and I believe I put it in my bin folder. I was wrong. It's not in my bin folder. It's in the C drive users and then whichever user you are. Uh, there's two specific files you need. There is a .npmrc file and then a .upmconfig.toml file. The npmrc is what's used by any kind of command line on your computer. So if you're interacting with open upm as an example um, and you're using command line for that, you need the npmrc. Uh, whereas the upmconfig.toml file is what's used by Unity when authenticating with those different registries. Um, Unity documents all of these steps in their own documentation page under scoped registry authentication. Um, you can look up the URL. It's just, it's in their regular old documentation manual. But um, they basically describe how to create that UPM config file. But that's it. That's everything for the deployment pipeline. Um, I believe I've covered everything that you might need to know if you wanted to kind of create your own. Um, but you don't have to use GitHub Actions. You could leverage AWS and do some kind of code pipeline stuff. Uh, it's not really restrictive when it comes to deployment pipelines, but this is just how I've done it. Um, but I hope you were able to at least learn something from this or you found it uh, entertaining or valuable or something. But that's all I got for you guys. So hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you later.